Join me in prayer. Lord of all wisdom, we thank you for the gift of your word. And as we think on these things, open our hearts and our minds to hear you. Amen. Exactly one year ago today, on the 21st of January, I was returning to Michigan after two weeks in the Holy Land. I'd walked where Jesus walked. I'd seen places that Jesus would have seen, buildings, buildings that Jesus would have seen, landscapes, traditions. We heard compelling stories of the people who live in this land where for centuries God has revealed God's self to human beings and where human beings have witnessed incredible miracles. In fact, one of the places we visited was the village of Kofarnaum. Along the shoreline of the Sea of Galilee, that's where the gospel story for today took place. I was there. However, I want to tell you about a different village. We went there the very last day of our time. It's called Wahad Al Salam Neve Shalom. It's a village that has two names in two languages. Arabic and Hebrew, and both names mean Oasis of Peace. It was founded in the 1950s by Father Bruno Hassar, an Egyptian-born Jewish man raised in France who became a priest later in life. When he was asked about this community, he said that we had in mind a small village composed of inhabitants from different communities in the country, Jews, Christians and Muslims who would live there in peace, each one faithful to their own faith and to their own traditions while respecting those of others. Each would find in this diversity a source of personal enrichment. It's a beautiful sentiment in founding a community. This village is a community where people are encouraged to be exactly who they are, culturally, linguistically, spiritually. But the primary value is to build commonality, friendship, togetherness. Since the 50s, Jewish, Muslim, and Christian families have moved into this village, navigating the ups and downs of the socio-political context that surrounds them. Quite a number of wars and armed conflict, all while prioritizing the value of community, standing as a beacon of a different life, an oasis of peace among different people. In this village, everyone gets to vote, regardless of their religion or their ethnic background. Generally, everyone goes to the same school, where kids learn multiple language and share multiple cultural expressions. This is not the case in the rest of the state of Israel and the rest of the Palestinian territories. People go to school normally in communities affiliated to the faith, right? Jewish kids, Muslim kids, Christian kids. In this community, the village shares in the tasks of what needs to get done. It's on a hillside. So when you get to the top, and you can see the communities. Not so far is the urban sprawl of the city of Tel Aviv. Not far from there is the city of Gaza. You can see it from the top of the hill. On the opposite side is the city of Jerusalem, which you can also see. So in the middle of all of these places that we know is this small community of 400 people trying to live in a different way as a beacon of peace. The people have chosen to live their lives there, doing the things that people do in life. There's nothing special or unique about them. They're teachers and lawyers and farmers. <laughs> they do the same things that normal people do, but they choose to live in an intentional way. So they don't have to be defined by anger, by revenge, by violence, by strife, the way many of their neighbors 
and communities all around them are. As I was reflecting on the gospel story for today, we find Jesus similarly running into people, doing what people do. They were working. They're out there with their boats, fishing, the way that their families have done for generations before them. And along the lake shore, Jesus runs into two of them and says, follow me and I will make you fishers of people. Walks a little bit further and sees two more guys. You too, come along. Jesus found these guys doing their regular lives, their regular jobs. And what's interesting to me is that when he says, I will make you fishers of people, he's inviting them to bring with them into the kingdom of God, into the good news of the kingdom of God, the skills, the knowledge, the things that they have been a part of their lives, just as they are, and use that for the good news of the kingdom. The patience that you need for fishing. I'm not a fisherman, but I have heard that it takes a lot of patience. The discipline, caring for their tools. We see in the story that two of them are mending the nets. You have to fix your tools in order for them to go to work. The attention that they need to pay to the health and the sustainability of the marine environment because that's what nourished them and their families. That was their workplace. So they needed to bring the knowledge, those skills, that disposition into what God and Jesus was asking of them. Share the good news of the kingdom. Let me ask you this. What would happen if Jesus came to your workplace and asked you to follow him. All of a sudden, Jesus walks into your classroom while you're teaching and he says, follow me and you will be a teacher for the kingdom of God. Or maybe Jesus walks into your office and says, I will make you a lawyer for the kingdom of God. Or I'll make you an accountant for the kingdom of God. Or walks into a hospital, I'll make you a nurse or a doctor for the kingdom of God a handyman, a custodian for the kingdom of God. It's kind of crazy, right? Sounds weird or laughable maybe to imagine that somebody walks into our place of work in the middle of us do, just doing our normal lives. And Jesus is asking us that in that space and in that place, we take who we are, what we know, and what we do to share in something that is transformative and different the kingdom of God. What's even crazier than this is that when Jesus was calling these four guys, this wasn't the best time to become a preacher. Notice that the story starts by telling us that John the Baptist had gotten arrested. And that's when Jesus chose to go exactly where John had gotten arrested and go and start taking the message just as John had done. The kingdom of God has come near, repent and believe in the good news. That's what John had been preaching before. He got arrested and Jesus is like, okay, that's where I'm gonna go and that's what I'm gonna do. And so in this space is where Jesus is calling Simon, Andrew, James and John. Take what you know, who you are and what you do and bring it for this new way of life, this new way of being. A way that brings us away, repent, turn around from the way the world is, turn around from that, and let's live into this different way, the kingdom of God. I gotta tell you, like, I asked myself, what was so compelling about Jesus in that moment that these guys are like, okay, We'll go. Like, imagine this, right? Like, they just sort of dropped everything and went. And I think the answer is in the calling to the kingdom of God. A vision which, cliche as this might sound, a vision of a world built of two kinds of people. The neighbors whom we love and the enemies whom we love. That's what we're called to, right? In this world, 
this world under the kingdom of God, we challenge our human tendencies to categorize and separate, to exalt some while disparaging others, to seek revenge after being hurt, to hoard resources for ourselves by taking away from others. The kingdom of God that Jesus calls us to turns that world on its head. Jesus let these four disciples know that what they had as fishermen, that who they were in their work, in their families, was just the right thing to bring to make a new kingdom. And that's why when I was standing at, at that hillside in um, Muhad al-Salam in Nebi Shalom, as I stood there just kind of like marveled after two weeks of churches and um, we went to the tomb of the patriarchs and we went to a mosque and we went to uh, all these conversations we were in the temple mount and hearing all these people talk about the things that you expect to hear when you go to the holy land this very last day of the trip i'm standing there on the hillside seeing in front of me a vision for a different kind of world a world where people are about more than their passions, but instead they're about the community that they're building together. And it's not easy. It's not for everyone. This community, this model has been tried in other parts of the state of Israel and in Palestinian territories and it hasn't worked. But the people who have made this place their home have chosen to do something different, to live their lives just the way that people live their lives with intentionality to build community. And that, I believe, my friends, is a vision of the kingdom of God that we are called to. And so today, I love the choices, the, the music that we've chosen for today. These hymns that talk about this calling, follow me, follow me. I hope that you will hear. You will hear the ways that Jesus, in your life, is calling you to follow a different way of being in the world a different way of being in community, a different way of approaching the people who are similar and different from us. And it doesn't take a big, big revolution. It just takes that we say yes. Amen.